remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you William Frawley in James Thurber's You Could Look It Up on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization which, in its happy way, signalizes the approach of summer. For the baseball season has already opened, and a good story about baseball can be as enjoyable as the game itself. Fortunately, we have such a story, and one written by an American of genius who not only writes, but draws. He is James Thurber, well known in the pages of national magazines, and deservedly admired by all who can see the funny side of things. Mr. Thurber's humor is so unlike anyone else's that one just has to use a special adjective to describe it. So let's call it Thurberish. I think you'll agree that our story tonight is thoroughly Thurberish. Indeed, it has a Thurberish title. You could look it up. And it's appropriate, too, that we should have as our star that very fine actor, William Frawley. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? Hallmark is the name to remember when you want to remember your friends. For birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, holidays, there is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste. And you'll send them with pride. For that identifying Hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says, you cared enough to send the very best. Hallmark Playhouse presenting James Thurber's You Could Look It Up, starring William Frawley. Now, Grandpa Doc? Why, Jamie boy, when your Grandpa Doc was trainer for a big league team, baseball was baseball. Things really happened in ball games then. Like the time Pearl de Monville. Pearl de Monville? A girl on a baseball team? Pearl wasn't no girl. Pearl was a midget. A midget? On a ball team? You heard me, a midget. Gee, Grandpa, that must have been a long time ago. Now, don't go trying to pin me down to dates, Jamie, and I'll tell you how it happened. Is this a true story, Grandpa? True? Well, you could look it up on the record. Every blessed word. It was toward the tag end of September, the year after we was world champs. And I was chief trainer, and Squawks McGrew was manager. Squawks? Yeah, they called him Squawks because when things was going bad, he lost his voice and squealed like a little girl when you stepped on her doll or something. We was in a terrible slump. From leading the league by seven or eight games, we went flopping down to a half a game ahead of St. Louis. And Squawks McGrew was yelling at everybody. He wouldn't listen to nobody, and none of the players would listen to him. Well, what about the midget, Pearl? Well, now, I'm coming to Pearl. Don't rush me. We was on our way to St. Louis and stopped off in Columbus, Ohio, to play an exhibition game. Columbus playing the world champs? That's right. And I couldn't stand watching them slaughter us. So I sneaked back to the hotel... I made the coffee shop okay, opened the door, got inside, and there was Squawks McGrew. So I sits down beside him, and there we are, like a couple of stiffs, waiting for the coroner. Oh, how I pity me, Doc. How I pity me. Well, maybe this is the end, McGrew, the end of the losing streak. I'll never smile again, Doc. (laughs) Never so long as I live. (laughs) Who cares, McGrew? What was that? I don't know. It sounded like a horse laughing into a tin can. <laughs> oh, it's a kid. Run along, Sonny. Don't Sonny me, Junior. Hey, waiter. Get this kid out of here. I seen that ball game today, McGrew. 
You know, you ain't got no bull club. What you got there is a sideshow. <laughs> I say, I'm sorry, Mr. McGrew, and I'll leave Mr. McGrew alone. Uh, he don't mean no harm. Beat it, kid. Don't call me kid, Junior. Who are you calling Junior, you little... Oh, all right, all right, that'll be enough. Come on. Uh, he don't mean no harm by that. He calls everyone Junior, because it always turns out that he's a year older than them. Now, come on, come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How old are you, Sonny? How old are you, Junior? Fifty-three. I'm fifty-four, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> now give me a light. <laughs> a midget? Why, I don't believe it. He got you, Junior. <laughs> a midget with a cane. A straw hat and a cigar. <laughs> now I've seen everything. Make this flat-footed waiter leave me go, McGrew. And someone boost me up on a table. Leave him alone, waiter. Bring him a sarsaparilla with a drop of poison in it. You tell him, Needle. You got the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, you. Who are you? I'm the guy just seen Barnum and Bailey clothes dressed up in baseball uniforms. And now I'm talking to the trainer. <laughs> I ask you who you are. What's your name? I'm Pearl Monville. Are you going to tell me your name or am I going to put... Pearl's the name, Junior. Pearl Monville. Pearl Monville. What kind of a name is that? Where are you from? I'm from the island of Stromboli. Stromboli? <laughs> Sit out, Pearl. McGrew, the team's on the way to the station. <laughs> are they going, Doc? By ambulance? <laughs> <laughs> ambulance, do you hear that, Doc? Now, don't encourage him, McGrew. Cut it out. <laughs> You're playing St. Louis next, ain't you? Yeah, five games. Why? Here's what you do with that team, McGrew. Huh? And I'm giving it to you free. Put your outfield on crutches, your infielders on stretches, and let the beastmen use their wheelchairs. <laughs> <laughs> How about the pitches, Pearly? Pictures. Yeah. Dams and plaster of Paris, and when it dries hard, I teach him cricket. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Doc? He teach him cricket. I'm getting out of here, McGrew. Your brain's going. <laughs> All right, I'm coming. Good. And Pearlie's coming along with me. Oh, no. Coming, Junior. I've got to see what those fugitives from the old man's home look like. Out of the bandages and braces. <laughs> Look, tell him that, Pearlie. Don't forget. You can't do that to the boys. They're touchy already. Pearlie will blow them high as a kite. Great. Come on, Pearlie. I'll lift you down. Oh, look, McGrew. Don't do it. Pearlie will start a mutiny. I know what I'm doing, Doc. Oh, why didn't I take up embalming like my mother wanted me to? So that's what's wrong with him, Doc. You've been practicing embalming the players. <laughs> Shut him up, McGrew, or I'm committing mayhem. Now, wait a minute. Pearl's the answer we've been looking for, Doc. Yeah. The team's in a slump. Yeah. Overconfidence. They've turned into a gang of prima donnas. They won't listen to anyone, not even to me, the manager. Little Pearl's gonna get through their thick hides with his insults. You watch. Pearl, a midget telling off the world's champs. Westbound Missouri Flyer. Track five for Dayton, Cincinnati. Indianapolis and St. Louis. You take Pearl over and meet the team. I'll check the tickets. You want to get me indicted for murder? Do what I tell you, Doc. Come on, Junior. That boy spoke. Now, look, Pearl. I got a strange feeling the boys ain't going to like you or your jokes. Like me? If one of them what I had ever said a nice word about me, I'd soon for slender. <laughs> okay, Pearl. Only don't say I didn't warn you. Look, Doc. Got a crowd following us. There for them, folks. Right this way, to me the world's worst bull club. Step along now. You better give me the name of your closest relative, Pearl. Oh, hello, boys. Hi, How are you, Clinger? 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 Hey, what's the idea of bringing a parade with you, Doc? Yeah, who's your little friend, Doc? A whitey cop? This is, uh... An old pal from a, a McGrews. A buddies. Yeah, yeah, a pal of McGrews. Pearl Dumont. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, Pearl, you hear that boy's pal of McGrews? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, look here, boys. McGrew wants you to treat Pearl nice-like. Uh, Cot, shake hands with Pearl. This is Whitey Cot, one of the league's greatest catchers. Uh, sorry. Okay, Pearl, shake. Don't try shaking hands with me, Junior. As if you do, those short fingers of yours will break her right off. <laughs> now, Pearl, cut it out, you hear me? Look, what is this, a gag? Gag, nothing. I got a pitch to cut. Pearl's telling the truth. Cut it out, Clinger. Look, I've taken just about enough from you, Clinger. Now, that's enough, Cut. You too, Clinger. If I was you, Cut, I'd retire. One more word out of you, Clinger, and I'm going to pin you. Yeah, you and who else? Just me. Out here on the station. 
What's going on here? Let me through. Stop. Let me through. Stop it, will you? Rasslers, rasslers. That's what I got for a ball club, and not good rasslers at that. Uh -huh, the police. Stop them, McGrew. You're the manager. Why should I? Let them murder each other. Ladies and gentlemen. Get down off of that baggage truck, Pearl. All right. Break it up. Come on, break right it up. That's the way. Step up and see the wrestling baseball oh, player. Stop them, will you? Louder, Pearl. Louder. Right. That's the way. See Blasar Klingor, the pitcher. Bushel basket card, the catcher. <laughs> All right, that's enough, Sonny. On to the train with you. Come on, all of you. He started that midget stuff. Oh, Maru, come on, on with three left feet. I told you, McGrew, you better apologize and send Pearl back to Columbus. Pearl's coming with us to St. Louis. Oh, no, no, you can't. You heard that. me. Pearl's coming oh. to St. Louis. He's our new mascot. Not me. I'm not masketing for no bunch of feeble-minded wrecks. They'll kill him, McGrew. They'll push him on a train window. Come on, Pearl. I'll lift you down. No, I got no toothbrush. No extra suit. Come on. Let me go, McGrew. Oh, put him down, McGrew. You'll be arrested for kidnapping. Let me go. Help, help. Police, police. Somebody's trying to steal a kid. Oh. Quit your squirming, Pearl. You're coming to St. Louis and help me knock the overconfidence out of this ball club. Kidnapper. 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 In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of You Could Look It Up. Starring William Frawley. But now I'd like to tell you about how my wife and I just settled an argument. There's a new baby next door to us, and I said, Dear, I've never seen two prouder people than those young parents. Let's send a card congratulating them. But my wife said, The grandparents are always the proudest of all. They are the ones we should send the card. So, what did we do? Sent cards to both the parents and the grandparents. And why don't you do that next time a new baby arrives in your circle of friends? You'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it, even for twins. Or if you are about to become a proud parent yourself, you'll find in the wonderful selection of Hallmark baby cards just the card you want to announce the new arrival to your friends. Just the card you want for every other occasion associated with babies, too. Cards to send with gifts to new babies. Thank you cards for baby gifts. Invitations to baby showers. You can see them all at the Friendly Store where you buy Hallmark cards. And the Hallmark you see on the back. That tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now we present the second act of James Thurber's You Act. 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 Of James Thurber's You Could Look It Up, starring William Frawley, with Jerry Austin as Pearl Dumontville. So there we was, Jamie. A world's champion ball club in a terrible losing streak. Beaten by a bunch of bush leaguers and heading for a shellacking from St. Louis with a cigar-smoking, wise-cracking midget named Pearl Dumonville in her hair. Grandpa, did Pearl get the overconfidence out of the team? Not so you'd notice it. St. Louis knocked us off two straight like tin soldiers. The third game, it's raining cats and dogs. And at the end of the seventh, when we was trailing nine to three, the game's calling a kind of rain. McGrew and me was in the dugout trying to keep dry and think of some other way we could make a living. And Pearl, he was sitting there grinning and puffing away at his big cigar. <laughs> I wish I was manager of a ladies' sewing circle. You are, Junior. You are. <laughs> no, I can't take no more, McGrew. Pearl ain't doing us no good. The team's never been this bad before. A World Series slipping out of our hands. World Series? These bums can't even play pinnacle. You know why? Yeah, because all the cards are in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> so long, Doc. Where do you think you're going? To the lawyers again. Again? I never even knew you'd been to the lawyers once. Just yeah. to show you how much you don't know. <laughs> What's the team? You got a... What's the team? You got a...
I've got to do something. Come on, Pearly. See you tomorrow, Doc. you got there, McGrew? A portable radio. McGrew, not in the dugout. The boys are touchy now. They're broadcasting our disgrace to the whole country. Hurley thought the boys would like to hear it. A beautiful day for a ball game, folks. The stands are packed to see St. Louis make it four straight games and head for the World Series. Turn it off. That guy has got to speak before the game starts. He's seen us play yesterday. Something's got from the crowd, folks. Can't see it from here. Just a second. What's happening? What are they laughing about? The crowd sighted a kid. A little fellow about three feet high wearing the uniform of the Mystic team. McGrew, you didn't... The kid's carrying a toy bat, swinging like mad. Turning handsprings now. And listen, listen to that crowd. Get him off the field, McGrew. Where'd he kind of kill him? The first guy that lays a hand on Pearl is through with baseball. Wait a minute. What is this? He's lighting up a big cigar. No, I'm wrong. It's not a kid. It's a midget. McGrew, you did this. Yes, it is a midget. Why'd he count the catchers walking up to him now? Oh, you should have seen that. Count pulled the doggy out of the midget's mouth and stamped on it. Now the whole missing team is converging on the little fellow. He's running. They're after him. He's heading for the visitor's dugout. What? I've lost him. He's disappeared behind the wall. Just a minute, I'll switch you to Jack Collins down on the field with a microphone. Take it, Collins. <laughs> This is Jack Collins. The midget has gotten away from Cott. Billy Klinger's climbing up after him. The rest of the team is going over after McGrew. Now here's McGrew coming up out of the dugout with his trainer, Doc. And here's the midget. He jumped down from the wall. He's hiding between McGrew's legs now. Whitey Cott's reaching for him. Hey, you guys. McGrew says leave Pearly alone. Wearing that uniform on the field. He's racing the whole team. Let me take him to the shower. Let him run. And our uniform. Who put him up to that? That uniform made something to us, making a mockery out of the uniform. It might surprise you, pack of fumbling idiots, to know Pearl ain't making no mockery of no uniform. Pearl de Monville has been made a regular member of this so-called ball club. Now get out there and warm up with your new teammates, Pearl. All right, we'll warm up. I don't believe it. I fixed it up with the front office by long-distance telephone. Play ball! Who you kidding, McGrew? I can just see our owner saying to you exactly what we need, Mr. McGrew. A cigar-smoking midget. I'm telling you, Doc, our owner's okayed it. Mr. McGrew, just exactly what did you tell the owners on the telephone? Dear owners, I said, I want to sign up a new player that no living pitcher in the whole league can strike out. And did you tell the people who own this ball club what size man this new player, Pearl de Monville, is? Never mind about that. Legally, Pearl de Monville is a member of this ball club. But, McGrew, even if it's legal, the team is only you. Now, look, you tell those clowns to get out there and play like they never played before. Uh, uh, or so help me. I'm replacing anyone that doesn't with a three-foot midget. Uh, I don't believe it. Ball three! You done it, McGrew. They're playing ball at last. Putting Pearl in uniform turned the trick. We're still trailing, ain't we? One to nothing. Ball four! Locked in! Beat this ball. Cops up in the slumps over. Turn on that radio and let's hear what that wise guy's got to say for us now. Something's come over the visitors and they're playing baseball. It's the first of the night. Score St. Louis one, visitors nothing. With the bases loaded and Whitey Cott, their strongest hitter, coming up. Looks like this ball game's going to be tied up or perhaps won in the next couple of minutes. See, even he's saying the slump's over. All Cott's got to do is let that pitcher walk in and we tie him up. Just a second. Cott, hold it. McGrew, where you going? Something's happened. Cott's not going to the plate. McGrew, the manager, is out on the field. Just a second. Pearl. Pearl de Monville, get up to the plate. Now you're talking, Junior. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They'll put you in a padded cell, McGrew. We're going to win this ball game, Doc. Oh, oh, There's not a pitcher in the world who can throw three strikes to a three-foot man before he pitches four balls. Pearl. Pearl, now, listen to me, baby. All you have to do is just stand there. You got that? He's got to walk you. They won't let you. Here comes the St. Louis manager, Muller, with the umpire. Tell him, ump. Tell him. Get that midget off the plate in 30 seconds or I'll forfeit the game to St. Louis. I told you, McGrew, I told you. Take a look at this contract, umpire. A contract for a midget? You really was to the lawyers. No, no, you can't. It's not in the books. 
No midget can play on no ball cap. Tell me, McGrew, what's this midget player been doing all season? Growing up. Tell him, Mom, tell him it's against the rules. Here's a book, Muller. Read me in print where it says there ain't no allowing a midget to play. Go ahead, read me. Uh, McGrew's right. Yeah. There's nothing in the rules says he can't play. You can't. No pitcher living can measure his strike for a three-foot man. Maybe next year they'll change the rules. Now play ball. You're a genius, McGrew. Come on, Junior. I'm a club to play, Junior. McGrew, the ah! Constitution's perfectly legal, Muller. No, no. Robber. Robberness. Robberness in our own town, you robber. Hello, the visiting team. Carl DeMonville now batting for a whitey cock. Play ball. <laughs> Jack Collins talking to you from the playing field, standing between home plate and the visitor's dugout. After a big argument, the umpire has ruled Pearl de Monville can pinch hit for Whitey Cott, and the 35-inch tall player is up at bat with the bases full, waiting to be walked to force in the run that'll tie up the score. The St. Louis pitcher, Frazee, six feet three inches tall, is studying the situation. He's crouching low, measuring the batter... No, 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 he's standing up now, on his tiptoes. He's going to lob the ball to the batter. And there goes the pitch. Ball one. Oh, way off. No, no, two feet over Pearl's head. Now, here comes the second pitch. Ball two. Crazy bull that went along the ground, and Pearl had to jump it. The pitcher's talking to the St. Louis catcher. There goes the catcher back, and... No, I don't believe it. Yes, he is. That big St. Louis pitcher, Frazy, is lying down on the ground now. <laughs> on his stomach. His right arm up, trying to heave the ball toward the plate, and... but still off. Here comes McGrew, the visitor's manager, and Doc, the trainer, standing right in front of me. One more, Pearlie. Just stand there, baby. Just stand right there like a little statue. Don't move now. Don't move. Now here comes the one that counts. The pitcher's still on the ground. He's letting it go. A high E. Easy pitch, big and slow, like a balloon in the air. And it looks good from here, heading for the plate. No, no, Pearl. The midget swinging. He hit it. Fair ball. <laughs> Pearl's heading for first base. The ball's rolling toward the pitcher. He can't get up. He misses it. It's still rolling. Here comes a shortstop after it. Oh, oh. third, and Pearl still running. With those little legs, first base is a sleeper jump away. Here comes the second baseman in after the ball, and he's got it. He throws to first. Uh Uh-oh, Pearl still 20 feet from first base. Stretch out there. Throw in my ball game. Why? Why? I couldn't help it, Junior. I'm only human. I was sure I'd kill it. Don't do you for the Don't get out of my way. Let me go, man. Right I got you now. Gone mad. He's got the midget by the feet. He's no. swinging him around. No. His head no, no, no. Find you in Wichita.
Was he killed? Nope. Not a scratch on him. <laughs> Just as we thought he was going to clear the Bull Durham sign, he starts cutting a knock down. Slow like a high fly. And in comes the St. Louis right fielder, moving under him for the catch. <laughs> Grab Pearl right out of the air. Boy, then what happened to Pearl? Pearl? Well, he just sort of vanished in thin air like our losing slump. After that, Jamie, when the team saw what uh, McGraw made a fool out of to the whole world, they felt sorry for him and busted out of their swell heads and played like demons. We hit Chicago for five straight games and sailed on to our own home uh, like a lot of dynamite to win the pennant. And then the World Series. But what about St. Louis? Well, after that game with Pearl, St. Louis was so shook up, they never hit their stride again. Their best pitcher, Frey Z, the one who got Pearl to bite on that slow ball, he kept shooting everything too low. <laughs> and the infield took to misjudging everything that came their way. When did you say this happened, Grandpa? What year? Now, you know my mind ain't what it was for dates, Jamie boy. But it's all in the record, just like I told you. You can look it up. In a moment, James Hilton and William Frawley will return. Now, I'd like to remind you of a joyous gift for children, the newest kind of greeting cards, Hallmark Little Women Dolls. Famous stars of MGM's new movie, Little Women, posed for these Hallmark Dolls and autographed them. Think what a thrill for a child to receive a doll of Margaret O'Brien as Beth, Elizabeth Taylor as Amy, Janet Leigh as Meg, June Ellison as Joe. Characters they've loved in the book, on the screen, now their very own dolls to play with day after day. Each doll is eight inches high, stands up by itself, and there's a charming verse that tells all about her. Their costumes of beautiful colors are just like the movie, and they have real feather plumes in their hats. You can mail them as easily as greeting cards, and they cost only 25 cents each. Or for only one dollar, you can get all four Little Women dolls in a permanent portfolio, a truly glamorous present. Tomorrow, at the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards, Look for Hallmark Little Women Dolls. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Mr. Frawley, for a thoroughly feverish performance. We've been very happy and I think very lucky to have you here. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Hilton. And thanks to Jerry Austin, who played Pearl de Monfort. Yes, indeed. A grand performance. You know, I always enjoy myself when I get mixed up with baseball. Its traditions are as truly American as, well, as your Hallmark cards. I think that's one of the nicest compliments we've ever had paid us. Thanks again, Mr. Frawley. And I hope you'll listen to us next week when we present Sir Arthur Pinero's great love story, The Enchanted Cottage, starring one of Hollywood's newest and brightest stars, Richard Widmark. And following that, Kenyon Nicholson's fine story of American carnival life, The Barker, starring that distinguished actor, Charles Bickford. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by George Corey. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards, when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to the adventures of Casey, crime photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.